It is project setup time. Welcome to Kickstart. In this video, we're gonna be going through setting up our project properties, going through how to set up our cabinet construction, what materials are gonna be using, and even what hardware is gonna be going into our cabinetry. I'm Ludwig from Markerbaum, and let's kickstart our project through the gate. Alrighty, and here we are back on home turf. Microbone Toolbox. Now, in order to access your project setup, you need to first have a project open. As you can see, under current project, I have just that, my Kickstart project. And that allows me to access my project properties button right over here. Clicking so will bring up the project properties interface. Now, my project properties is split up into different tabs that are laid up right across the top here. Now, the first tab that we're gonna be focusing on is the Project Properties tab, also within Project Properties. Now, this guy here can be configured to funnel information that we input into our Project Properties into our AutoCAD drawing template. We can have our AutoCAD drawing template linked to a job email field, a job address field, a job description field, for example. So the information that we input in here gets inputted into our drawing template. So you can type something in here. And if that template's configured, it would appear on any page that has the attribute linking to this description. Now, the next tab across is the user defined properties. And these are very similar to our project properties as you can have information that you input in the user defined properties actually translate over to your AutoCAD drawing template. The main difference being is that this can be configured to have any kind of field set up. You can even have it linked to your global variables or project wizards as well. So any information that you put in a project setup automatically gets imported into these fields. Correspondence is a, another field that you can use to correspond with other users using Microbellum. You can add notes in here by right-clicking the white area and adding a correspondence. And with that, you can add information, like if you received any stock, if anyone's been dispatching any units or what have you through here. If you want to streamline how you communicate with other Microbellum users. Next up is the Project Wizard tab. Now, this is the project wizard set up for the Microbellum Foundation Library. A lot of what I'm gonna be doing is going to be done within this library. So if you're using a different library, please be aware there may be some differences in some of my interfaces, such as my project wizard or my global variables. The project wizard in the Microbellum Foundation Library is set up so a lot of our cabinet parameters are able to be customized through here. Things like how our cabinets are going to be constructed can be adjusted and changed through this interface. If we go to one of the sub tabs beneath our main tabs, such as project setup, we can even go as far as how our kickers are assembled, how many shells we have, and if we click on cabinet size defaults, what default sizes our cabinets are gonna be when we draw them into our model space. You have a few other tabs at the top here, such as material options, that allows you to actually assign grain direction for things like your doors and drawer fronts if you're using a wood grain material. On to the global variables, and I'm getting a little pop-up saying that, hey, you've been going through your project wizard, would you like to save any changes? And in my case, I'm gonna hit yes. Now, the global variables for the Markovellum Foundation Library is where a lot of your cabinet parameters are also set up. Things like how your back is constructed, how your shadow line, how your screws are gonna be coming onto your cabinet is all controlled through here, through these different tabs and through these different uh, interfaces. So for example, if I wanted to say, change what my shadow line is going to be using, if I go to my library construction, I can see there's some very clearly named areas that I can go to, such as cabinet construction, and then from there, I can go to my shadow line. Click on the plus button next to that as well. And I have the different options for my shadow line, where I can have it defaulted to being ticked on for this project, or even what kind of shadow line extrusion I would like to use, whether it's a solid rail or a, one of the aluminium extrusions. 
The next tab we're going to be looking at is the project materials. And the project materials is where we can set up what kind of materials each component of our library is going to be using. Now on the left hand side is that cut list. These are different parts of my microvolume library, ranging from my base, base carcass materials, my finished materials, countertops, and more so. On the right hand side is my actual material library. These are where my sheet board, my edge bending strips are all saved as well. Now at the moment on my left hand side, my cut parts are split up into each individual component. For example, I've got a base bottom, which I can assign material to. I've got a base back I can assign material to. There is a long list I can assign materials to. However, we can compound this list by right clicking anywhere within this area here, going down to groups and show groups. If I go all the way back to the top and now you can see that instead of each individual component, they are now grouped into different groups. For example, the first one is my base carcass parts. So rather than have to assign material for each individual component of my carcass, my back, my side, my top and bottom, etc., they are all grouped together here. So if I change the material within this group, it changes it for all those components. Same for finished faces. These contain information like my drawer front, my doors, my end panels for my base cabinets, instead of each individual component. Now to actually assign material, to these uh, components, I need to go to this side over here. Now, these folders here contain different materials. For example, if I click on this generic metric here, I can see I've got different folders labeled with different sheet material. For example, if I click on this decorative laminate board, I've got different sheet material. Now, for example, if I wanted to change my decorative laminate board 16 mil, that's currently assigned to my doors and end panels to say, a grained 18 mil laminated board. I just need to simply click on the material I'd like to use, make sure that that material pointer or that component is also highlighted and then click on this arrow here. And you can see that it's now assigned that particular material to that component. Now at the moment, these are rather generic names and I would like to create my own material for this project. So in my reports, my machining, I know exactly what I'm cutting or what I'm using. So to create your own material, you can copy an existing one within your library. So in this list on my right, I'm gonna click on my decorative laminate grain board, right click, and I'm gonna copy that material to the project level. It's gonna prompt me how many times I would like to copy this material, to which I'm gonna leave it as one by hitting OK. And as you can see up the very, very top, with a black dot next to him is a new material with a little one at the bracket there, just so it has a different name. So now this black dot material, if I right click on him, I now have the option to edit this material. Before, if I try to right click on these green guys here, they are giving me the cold shoulder and they're not letting me do anything to it, apart from copying him, which is not what I wanna do. But this guy, oh, now nah, he is much more friendly and he's actually letting me edit him. And here in my edit material field, I can now edit my material, starting with giving him a new name. For this one, I'm gonna call this one, for lack of imagination, wood, grain like I said I don't really have a great imagination but I'm going to call him wood grain test material 18 mil now you can obviously call this whatever you would like if you say use a laminex material you can call it laminex y200 walnut what have you I generally recommend that you put the thickness of the material at the end of the name as well as this gets inputted into your reports as well on the field below it is the thickness of the material. Now this field is how your cabinets can read what thickness this material is using. It also leads into how your panels are gonna be machined, depths and whatnot is gonna be controlled through here. Code is where you can assign what specific router bit or cutter you would like to use for this particular material. So if you have a tool file nice and handy, 
if you use the syntax, the pipe on your keyboard, a capital T, and you can import the tool name that you have assigned in your tool file, if need be. Below are some markup, waste factor, and labor value fields, and these lead into the estimating reports within the Markovellum Foundation library. You can have labor values, which have minutes assigned to them, to any additional labor that needs to go to preparing this sheet, such as polishing, painting, sanding, just to name a few examples. Waste factor also allows for any wastage, adds a bit of a percentage, in my case here, 20%. 0.2, and markup, if you would like to add any additional markup to this material. You can add a comment here. You can also assign what grain you would like to assign to this material if you would like to. You can also set whether Markovon would like to prompt you whether or not Markovon will flip any phase six machining on the panel if there's only phase six on that panel, or on the underside for that matter. And down below is my sheet size. If I click on one of the fields and click on edit sheet size, I can then adjust the width, the length of my sheet, what priority I would like to cut it in. Say for example, if I had different sheet sizes, I can have them different priority so Markovell knows which one to use first before moving on to other sheets. Useful if you would like to use off cuts or scrap first. You can also set a estimate price for the sheet and you can also set up some leading and trailing widths and lengths along your sheets. These pretty much tell Marco Velma how far from the edge of the sheets you would like to place your parts when it is going through the processor. And with that out of the way, we're gonna hit OK. And there is my newly created material. And once again, I can assign this material to any part I would like to by highlighting both material and the components and clicking on the arrow. And you can go through and assign any material along the way. You can also do so with any buyout material, which is material that you can use to have it visually displayed on your screen, have it come in in reports, but it's not gonna be manufactured on the CNC machine, such as your stone, glass, aluminum, things that you're gonna be outsourcing or purchasing. You also have an edge band library where similar to my sheet stock and my buyout library, within it, I have my own different sets of materials. And I can assign them to my edge band parts, the same way that I assign my sheet stock material. If I right click on a material, I have that same copy selection to project level option. Now, if I go over to my material wizard tab, yes on you to save the changes, Within the Microbellum Foundation library, you also have a hardware wizard. And it is within here that you can set up what kind of hardware is gonna be used within this project. For example, in this case here, I can switch between using a Bloom, Grass, or Headache Hinge. I can even switch what mounting plates or fixing brackets I would like to use for it. I can select what kind of handles or drawers I would like to use as a default, as well as locks, and any sort of construction hardware defaults. For example, I can go to my CAM fittings and I can select different kind of CAM systems that I would like to use depending on the job. And finally, you have your door wizard, where from here, you can do things like setting up defaults within your doors, whether it's where your door hardware or any add-ons are gonna be adjusted as well as any defaults whether it's how your internal profiles are set up and whatnot. You can also view lookup tables, which contain a lot of information with regards to different things within your library. For example, within my door wizard, I can set up my own internal shaker doors. By clicking on view and going to my lookup tables, going to this little table name down here, I can go down to say internal profile, which controls my shaker door profiles. Going through this table, I can set up my different profile routes, depths, and whatnot. And with all that being said, you can, of course, save as you go along. Now, there's one more thing I would like to cover within the project setup, and we're gonna circle back to our project material. Now, if I go back to my cut parts, and I go back to my sheet stock library, at the moment, I have my wood grain 
material set up for my base cabinet finished base materials. Now, for example, there may be a few situations where my base cabinets have two different face materials assigned to them. Now, if I go ahead here and I change my face material, I'm gonna be pretty much switching between the two and I'm gonna be going around in circles. I will need to create a separate specification group, one that contains my base units having a wood grain finish and one that contains them having a color board finish. To do that, I'm gonna go up to my project specification groups. Now, as you can see, these are my specification groups and everything that we've been doing within this project is being saved within these spec groups. At the moment, I've been working on this metric decorative laminate spec group. I can tell this by closing over here and I can tell that all the work I've been doing is in this metric decorative laminate. So if I would like to make a copy of this metric decorative laminate and have this copy where my wood grain, where my door material is instead assigned a color board material, I can click on my spec group. I can go up to this copy button right over here. And from there, I can give this spec group an entirely different name. For example, I can call this spec group color board finish because this will indicate to me that this spec group that my cabinets can be using will have this spec group used and the materials associated to the spec group. In fact, I'm gonna create a new cut pass file name for it, color board as well. So I know that this spec group is using a cut pass file where all my information regarding to my color board material is saved. And I'm gonna do the same thing for my edge banding as well. And there you can see a color board finished spec group that I have now just created. And there's those two extra components that I've created. Now if I close that interface down, and from here I can now access that newly created spec group by clicking on this drop down list and going to color board finish. And now from here, I can do the same steps that I did before assigning wood grain material to my base cabinets but instead assigning a colorboard finish. So once again, I'm gonna right click in my list, go to groups and show groups. And from here, I'm gonna go back to my generic metric folder within my sheet stock library. And I'm going to go down to my decorative laminate board, but this time assign a decorative laminate board to my finished faces and click on this arrow right over here. Now, if I save this and I switch, to my original metric decorative laminate spec group, I should see if I've done it correctly that that spec group will still have the wood grain finish for my base finished faces. So that means that I would have some cabinets using metric decorative laminate as a spec group and some cabinets using the color board finish spec group. So then they have automatically those corresponding materials assigned to them. So if I group it one more time, and I can confirm that things are looking good. And these are the steps that you can go through to make sure that you're assigning the correct material to your library. Finally, we're gonna finish things off with a save and a close. And with that, our project is set up, ready to rock and roll, kick some butt, and chew some gum. And we're all out of gum. As usual, I am Ludwig from Markovon. Take care yourselves and have a wonderful day.